The Walking Dead No Man's Land is the official mobile game of AMC's The Walking Dead. It's a turn-based action strategy game where you battle hordes of walkers with all your favorite The Walking Dead heroes, including Daryl, Rick, and Michonne. There's tons to do, and they even added a new hardcore game mode for experienced players called The Distance. So download the free game from App Store or Google Play or go to getnomansland.com slash Negan now and get Negan for free. This special offer is only available right now. That's getnomansland.com slash Negan. <laughs> we, got a, we got a show for you. <laughs> Listen up to this new episode. <laughs> All right, I guess that's the bit. Uh, thanks, guys. It's not even like the Halloween episode. We're just making weird ass sounds. <laughs> yep, we're getting ready. Oh, we're gonna we make it real spirit. spooky again. Nice. Wait, when is Halloween? Well, now that we got all that giggling out of our system, I don't, I don't know if I got. Oh boy! Uh, no, actually, oh boy. no, I'm good. I'm good. I just checked. It's all out. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new episode of Crucible Radio, your source for all things Destiny 2 PvP. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, well, well, welcome, welcome. back. Well, well, welcome. Hey, Swain. Hi. How are you, Bones? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Um, this is a fun topic today. I think we've been secretly looking forward to doing this, which it was only possible now that we've acquired much gear, but uh, I'm excited. Birds, how are you? Are you still traveling? Where are you? <laughs> oh, dude, tomorrow, tomorrow night at 930, I'm going to go home. <laughs> and then on Saturday, I'm going to force myself to stay in bed until like noon, because if I don't, <laughs> I'm going to be extremely cranky. Have, have, I, have I talked about this on the show before? Uh, that once you travel? Or, once or ten times. <laughs> well, not, not that I travel. That, that, that I've, I've, I mean, and you guys have, have observed this about me, but that when I come back from a trip, I need to spend a day just like as a slug catching up on sleep or else I get extremely cranky. And this occurred to me that this was pretty regular the other day when when Mrs. Birds and I were, were hanging out and I'd been in a really bad mood all day. And then it was like 5 p.m. and I look over and I say in an extremely angry voice, I'm not angry anymore, okay? And she goes, all right, I'll take that at face value. What do you want to do? I want to watch YouTube videos about cooking shows, Okay. <laughs> So I'm I'm embracing it. I'm I'm gonna catch the fuck up. I'm gonna finally let this cold go to sleep, and I'm gonna play um, some video games. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Other things. That sounds. That's a real good so idea. Nice. Oh my god. But um, hey, look, I can't complain. I've been seeing all different parts of this country, and uh, I got to talk about my favorite video game with you two. Woo! So. Uh, on YouTube, <laughs> YouTube version of our podcast. Shout out so. to the YouTube version of this episode. <laughs> Speaking of um, Seguis, Seguis. Uh, what, what are we segueing to? What, yeah, what? What was the top? segue? I don't. <laughs> go Speaking to of, slash Crucible Radio. Um, do we have a fun five star review from iTunes to read this week? I've come to crave these. I've come to just enjoy them. All right. Uh, this one's just by, it's by Fatal One, and it's just labeled, Kill Me Now. <laughs> it says, screw these guys. The one named Bones looks like a fucking Oodle Loop. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Yep. What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Did, did that say the one named Bones Bo- with an M? No, Bones. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was spelled correct. I'm fine with either of those. I'm no longer the other guy, and I'm now the Oodaloop. 
Hey, this guy looks like a noodle loop. Puta loopa doopa dee doo. Ha! I thought, everyone, we're not going to talk about oodle loops again this week. We got other things, but please head over to iTunes. Leave us a funny review like the one from Fatal One. And uh, maybe we'll read yours on the show when uh, Birds has a hankering for some iTunes reviews. <laughs> <laughs> you know I love them. Well, we, we've been alluding to it. Can we can we talk about what this episode is? Yeah, man, let's talk about it. This episode, working on the outline, I I, I put a title on this episode. Who knows what it'll actually be? Bones picks them out at what I'm assuming is the last possible second. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but the episode title in my mind is, hey, don't sleep on these. And the reason it's called that is because there's so much stuff in Destiny you've never even tried. And unlike D1, um, and D1 got close, but we're on a whole new level now. There's so much good stuff in this game that people aren't using. Yeah. And I don't know if it's not popular or it was just unfamiliar. Um, I, I think I have the, the answer here. I think a lot of people got... Uh, used to having one option for their loadout before. And they, it, I mean, it works. Like you can use the one thing if you want. Um, and you see that a lot. Like people tend to s- find that lane in the meta and just stick to it. And that could be personality types being like, oh yeah, like I just like, I like what I like. I, I use what I use. Uh, but there, it, there is a lot of options now. And we kind of covered it last week. Rambling, he's been using a lot of different things, and we have as well. Yeah, and in all fairness to to the listeners and to us, the guys coming up with these these suggestions, some of them you're gonna know, you're gonna go like, oh yeah, I use that. Thanks, guys. And some of them <laughs> are gonna be uh, popular, but I, we might reinforce why they are popular, or to say that like, man, this one. This is one of the greats out of the great. Um, but hopefully a lot of these are ones you're going like, you know what? That's been sitting in my vault. I've been thinking about it. Uh, I'm going to pull that one out and try it. And uh, I think there's definitely one or two that you're going to go. I don't believe you. There's no way that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and I think what, I, well, either that or the thing that happens to me, which is somebody's talking about a gun and I very quickly Google it because I've never heard of this thing before. <laughs> They're swearing by it. And it's like, not Antiope or Mida, and uh, I, I say, I don't you know what the meta is? Um, I've never heard of this thing. I think the other thing we're going to surprise people with is uh, the topic that I want to cover this week, uh, and that's Sunbreaker, because yeah, <laughs> he's back. And that kind, I mean, that kind of like it fits right into what we were just saying. Like, people will not believe that I'm telling the truth, and like that I'm actually legitimately enjoying Sunbreaker right now. The solar subclass will surprise you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Swain, you, you sort of had a bit of an arc to this one because I remember uh, a... We had a hot take. Was that a pun? A hot take. Um, oh, a hot... Oh, arc? Oh. Yeah. I'm, no. No? <laughs> Right now, I, I don't know. Uh, I asked, was judges. it? If it's not, then just tell me. <laughs> uh, judges are saying uh, close. They see where you're going with it. But no. <laughs> All right. Nope. I'll uh, take it. No Thank you, judges. To house bones. Um, I'm paraphrasing here, but I believe you described it uh, to the effect of um, Dookie. You didn't like it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you've come around. Yeah, there was something about like, I don't know what it is about striker but it's just like it feels boring to me playing it i don't know why but it just kind of always has been that way so i spent a lot of time playing striker at the beginning of destiny 2 and was like okay yeah i get it you throw your pulse grenades on everything and this the super is cool because it's a roaming super but it doesn't have much, you know, evade to it. You kind of have to really eat up your super if you want to uh, do some jukes with it. And that's like using the sh- shoulder charges, like the sun charge that's built into it. So uh, there was a point where I was just like, you know what? I need something to do right now. Let's throw on some breaker and, you know, mess around. Kind of figure it out. Because I don't like 
you see it every once in a while when you're playing trials or just regular quick play. Um, but you never really see someone mastering it. And especially in like the realm of the you know public Twitch and Twitter, you know, people, I didn't really see many people using it. So figured I'd give it a, a hearty go. <laughs> Well, it's, it's interesting that you're, in a way, you're sort of starting over. And I think, I mean, this is p- part of a big part of people just starting to explore some of the other options, is that you had built a very, you know, it's, it's, I think of D1 Sunbreaker, I think of Swain, maybe I'm biased. <laughs> um, but you really carved out a play style for yourself. You were the first person I knew who was doing nasty things on a regular basis with Sun Charge. Um, you sort of had your build and... What was it? Was it that you tried that particular build on the Sunbreaker in D2 and it wasn't happening and that sort of wrote you off it? What what got you back in? So I would say it was probably that. Like it didn't have the tools that I was used to with Sunbreaker before, which was mainly like Sun Charge, like you said, and, you know, its ability to evade. But like D1 had so many evade possibilities between Twilight Garrison and Sun Charge and it was filled with, you know, movement possibilities. So when I went into it, I kind of like saw that combined with one of the paths, the code of the fire forge, which I was like, Oh, this is probably the better one at first. Uh, it has the shoulder charge mechanic into it. And I was like, Oh, I'll just use that. And I've like, I've gotten to the point with the shoulder charge mechanics on both of the subclasses where I'm just like, ugh, ugh. Like, if I could not pick it, it'd be great. Like, it just, I have so much ingrained bad habits with it where I think, like, I can get this shoulder charge and get the kill. And it gets me into, like, a mess. <laughs> like, every time. <laughs> so, it's more, at this point, it's mostly a movement, like, movement mechanic. Like, you're just going to use that to get around the map. And every once in a while, you may get a cleanup kill but you should not rely on it to like start engagements. But like I said, I didn't really like the code of the fire forged, which has like the shoulder charge mechanic. It has the exploding hammers um, and it has something called tempered metal to it where the kills grant your allies bonus movement and reload, which is kind of like the, uh, what what was the perk bones on a storm caller that did something like that? Ah, Pulse Wave. That's what you're thinking of. <laughs> wow, Pulse, your memory is impeccable. <laughs> Just like an encyclopedia of D1. Oh, oh I know Stormcaller so enough. well, like the back of my hand. <laughs> Whoa, I, my back of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So you were playing with the Fire Forge. You were exploding hammers. You were shoulder charging-ish. Um, and you weren't feeling it. But then, with this latest dive into Sunbreaker, I decided to give the other, you know, the other path a go. Um, the thing about this path that kind of made me shrug it off at first, like back when we first started, was the fact that it involves sunspots. And sunspots in D1 were just like, bleh, like I gotta stand in them. Like, that was just always my thought, which, like, you know what? I'll just take Sun Charge. You know, all the rest, you know, I'm not going to mess with Sunspots. The only Sunspot I ever really used was the one with that came with the melee. Like, you get the melee kill, creates a Sunspot. So, but to remind you of what the code of the Siege Breaker does, it's got a lot of, like, really neat things to it. So, it's built around the Sunspot uh, build. And it's got a melee called Mortar Blast, which releases a solar explosion that sets everyone on fire around you. So if you have multiple people around you, and even if you don't get the kill, punching someone with it lights everyone around you on fire. And that starts like this for me has started engagements really well when I'm being a little bit aggressive. So you get in there, you get the melee off they're burning and then you just hit fire hand cannon or your sidearm or whatever you got going. And even if you don't make it out of that engagement alive, there's a very good chance that they burn out, which is always good. 
And if you're in a game that like relies on a lot of team shouting, if someone's there with you and they're everyone is on fire around you, it's a pretty easy team shot kill from that point. So <laughs> Mortar Blast is pretty neat. Uh, it also still has the built-in uh, solar, what was it? Solar Wind, which was like a, uh, which was a Warlock perk in Destiny 1. But I've gotten plenty of kills where I've punched people off the map. Or <laughs> it works like the tractor cannon where if you hit them hard enough and they're like jumping at the same time, they will hit the wall and die. So a lot of really interesting, fun uh, abilities still happening uh, with the Sunbreaker. And it's that was one of my favorite things about it. <laughs> it was just those weird kills where you punch someone off the map or they hit a wall and they die. And like, like D1, I just play this for fun. <laughs> so if I'm having fun with like weird kills like that, it's, it's, it's a benefit to me. The other thing with, with that, though, is someone, if you punch someone away from you, that is not only disorienting for a lot of people, um, it gives you the range to get a, a really good, like, follow-up kill. Mm-hmm. So, if, like, if you don't get to punch off the map or punch into a wall, punching them away from you uh, gets them out of melee range. And if you're using Syntheseps, you might still be in melee range for you. <laughs> <laughs> so but a lot of times I just like end up using my primary and I gun them down well yeah and like it sounds like you're saying you know someone might hear that and go okay so using a melee that sometimes procs this launch effect and get this sort of like gimmicky kill where you launch them into a wall even if that part of it doesn't happen every time getting someone away from you it's with really that kind nice of speed benefit. is really good because they will maybe try to press melee and maybe you force them to do that whiff. And yeah. the melee animation is fairly punishing. If you don't land a shot, you are just sort of hanging out there in the middle. So swinging your I think arm there's around more utility yeah. to, to, to that trick than, than, uh, then yeah, then it gets credit for. So part of that though, is if you're using your build, right, you are building around, so like really shortening your cooldowns. So we'll get Mm -hmm. into it a little bit more with like exotics, but well, exotics and sunspots. But if you're shortening your cooldowns enough, like the reason you're not seeing a lot of like melee procs for this all the time is because your melee is not really up that often compared to like what it used to be. Right. Like you're like, if you're not using any melee recharge mods or any of that, your melee recharge, and your grenade recharge in a minute and 20 seconds. It takes so long. So a lot of your engagements, you're going to just get a basic melee off. You're not going to get a charged melee off. There's, I mean, there's other parts of this, uh, this path, but like that melee right there though, totally is much better in my eyes than the sun charge. Well, or yeah, the sun charge. So, uh, that's why I like that over that. And then, uh, I, I like it sort of fits with the, um, it sort of fits with the concept as well. Like uh, I think a lot of people criticize Titans in D1 for like, they're supposed to be the frontline soldier. And this seems like a skill set that really sort of matches that, right? Like if you're in a team fight and somebody's got to go into the fray to disorient, to um, maybe be bait, maybe <laughs> be distraction and to go into that with a punch that knocks one guy back and sets everyone else on fire. Not bad. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good start. Fitting. So the other parts of this are the fact that it's got a part called Soul Soul Invictus, which is cauterized, essentially. It's just got a different name. Um, and that works great for when you're advancing from sunspot to sunspot or you are in the middle of getting team shot and you get a kill off, you immediately get a chunk of your health back, which is so important in those engagements. And then finally, uh, because I said it, you are basing your play style around the sunspots. It's got a perk called Sun Warrior, which if you stand in sunspots, everything lasts longer and your abilities recharge quicker. Um, The really cool thing about this, though, 
is the other perk, Endless Siege, where you throw more hammers when you're in a sunspot. So this is where it gets interesting, because I did some Fallout plays math before this. I may not be exactly right, and a lot of this stuff, I didn't have any mods on. So it could get better. But the simple math of it, if you activate your super, it creates a sunspot underneath you. And if you just stood there and threw hammers from one stationary spot, um, you get 10 throws with your hammers. If you oh, move wow. outside of the sunspot, you get five. So it's exponentially better to throw hammers from a sunspot. That's 10 throws. There's only four people in most PvP matches. Like, Well, especially like, in a mode like Countdown. I mean, if you're defending... And you can stand there for however long that even lasts, even if you're not chucking it every t- second. Just having that sort of <laughs> that that basically fire tower that you can stand there that's pretty yeah. effective. Well, and and hammers create a sunspot on impact. Yeah, right. So that that's so the combo. You, you, if you want to move with it, you you <laughs> throw it at someone, <laughs> move up to the sunspot, and keep moving up as you go. You're going to like, it's going to be less hammers. You're not going to get 10 in that situation, but you may get six or seven if you throw it right. And I just, it's like, I like the idea of a countdown showdown now that you mentioned it, Bonesy, where you pop your super solely so you have 10 sunspots to arrange around (laughs) the charge. (laughs) Just line it up, you get every little gap. It's like, all right, you can go in there if you want. But, Create a uh, nice ritual space. So here's the <laughs> thing with sunspots, though, is sunspots last 20 seconds long. So if you just get a kill with a melee and create a sunspot, the best thing you can do is stand there in that sunspot because it takes your melee recharge and your grenade recharge from a minute 20 to 20 seconds. So you can just stand there in your sunspots and get your recharge of your melee if you just st- stand there. <laughs> and that's with no mods. Like, if you don't put any mods on it, you are getting your melee back and your grenade back in 20 seconds. So this combo is you kill someone with, with a melee. Make sure I got this straight. Because it's a solar ability kill, it immediately restores a chunk of health. And then you are clear, assuming the engagement's over or you've got a good spot, a good angle, to sit in it, reload, and while you're enjoying 20 seconds, up to 20 seconds of the sunspot, uh, you're getting your next melee and your grenade back while you're there. Pretty quickly, yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. (laughs) Not bad. It's got a good synergy to it, so... I've really been trying to figure out how to best use it. And I've been like stumbling across these things like one by one. So like I'd got like a a melee kill and a sunspot, you know, popped up and I was just like standing there in it. I was like, oh man, like I already have my melee and grenade back. That's pretty quick. And right before this podcast, I did all this quick and dirty math. So I was just like, as I was saying there, I was like, wow, this is, this is much better than I thought it would be. And that goes with your exotic choices, which the Titan has a pretty good, you know, has some pretty good options. Um, My first thoughts, like when I was typing this all up, I was like, Syntheseps, like that's what I use. Like I want to go for melee kills all the time. And I want to have that fun, you know, reach where I can hit anyone, especially if I punch them away. Like I want to be able to like have the better melee range. Um, I also really like Alpha Loopy, which is just always a good choice. You pair it with your your wall, you get some health back. It's like a mini, you know, a, a Kmart rift. <laughs> <laughs> but right before I got on, I was like, you know what? I should cover my bases. What does Hallow Fire Heart do? Like, by comparison, how does this fit into the Sunbreaker? And so... Going into this, I could say I haven't used it in PvP all that much. I used it maybe a match, and I didn't really like. I just like oh, I want my I want the health or I want the the melee range. So I went back, but trying this out and figuring out the time on all of them was 
pretty nice. So Okay, hold, hold on a second. T- tell me what this thing does, because I think I got one once. I took one look at it and said, like, eh, okay, you can hang out in the vault for a little bit. <laughs> Hello, Fireheart. What is the exotic perk on this? So the exotic perk is called Sunfire Furnace. It greatly improves the recharge rate of your solar abilities while your Hammer of Soul is charged. So um, we kind of talked about it with Ramblin' last week when it came to Gunslinger with the six shots. He was like, you need to have intention. Like when you go to use your super, you have to have a plan. You need to be ready to go and you need to be ready in front of a bunch of people, essentially. Um, Same goes for Sunbreaker. And a lot of times you only get one of these supers a game. Sometimes you can get two if you're really aggressive and you're being, you know, you're really going at it in an Iron Banner match or something. But for the most part, you get one. So the way I see it is you need to kind of play this off. Like, like you're going to save your Sunbreaker for that perfect moment later in the game. If it's going when well, you become a a human mortar cannon, just launching ten hammers yeah, from yeah. your your perfectly positioned spot. The cool thing about the Hell of Fire Heart, though, is when it's charged, you essentially get the sunspot perk. So, like I said before, it's a minute twenty seconds normally to recharge your grenade and your melee. If you have this Sunfire Furnace perk active, because you're super charged. It goes down to 25 seconds. So you can be throwing <laughs> grenades <laughs> and using your melee every 25 seconds. Um, so that is a minute 20. That's 80 seconds down to 25 seconds. I'm going to do a little bit of mental math here and say, holy fucking shit, <laughs> that is really fast. <laughs> like what, like a mod is going to shave off, like you stack mods and it's going to shave off like what, 10, 20 seconds. You're still looking at like, a minute if you're lucky. Yeah. Um, this cuts it oh, in half. And like I said, and I haven't some? used any mods on this. So 25 seconds was without any mods. Fuck it. Man. So, uh, but if okay, pair that with a sunspot and the hail of fire heart, it's 12 seconds. Bruh. So, Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. Like the math is really nice, and it like it. It paints a picture that I don't think a lot of people are using. And we talked about this a bunch of times. Like you need to find like people need to go out and find really cool stuff in the game. Like these mechanics that work really yeah. well together. And when I was doing this, I was just like smiling ear to ear. I was like, this is awesome. Like why, <laughs> why is no one talking about this? We're talking about it right now, but like, I just want to encourage other people to go out that are better than me. Cause I'm not the best PVP player. But there's definitely people out there that could figure the hell out of this and use it to just wreck. Swain's back, baby. <laughs> um, okay, let, let, let's finish it out. Um, so apparently you can throw a grenade roughly every 12 seconds for a good chunk of the match. Uh, what's your grenade of choice? I use incendiaries because classic. it's just, it, yeah, it's a classic. You can if you are good at putting things in corners or bouncing off walls, it's really good engagement starter if they're burning and you got to like, and it's good for tracking too. So you get the burn on them and you can see them run away or where they go. uh, If you follow the numbers. So it's really just a simply, there's not a better one. Like you're not going to use the fusion grenade because it sucks. Like why would you, you know, there's no instant kill. So You'd rather get the chance to get burn on three people or two people than, you know, the shield off one. And the other one, the uh, the other, the thermite grenade is just eh, like you can just step to the side and you're like, you're like, oh, yeah, it's no like vo- void wall or uh, like the, <laughs> the pulse grenade. The pulse grenade is just crazy good. So um, it's neither like no, none of those. So. Just use your incendiaries. It's the best one. All right. Well, Swain, you've 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 made the call. Uh, hopefully, someone will will join you in this <laughs> challenge, and we can see what this thing is capable of. Realistically, though, Striker is still king of the titans right now. Do you think this is competitive? Can this can this do work against a Striker? I see Sunbreaker right now as like 
you're going to use it because you're going to throw someone off. Like they're not going to know what to do if you're using all this like correctly. Um, it, striker's still king. Like obviously pulse grenade, two pulse grenades is crazy. Um, and the super still amazing for shutdowns. Um, but I see it like this. Sunbreaker is really good and it's secretly really good. And the super being able, like you got to get good with throwing obviously, but it's like golden gun. Like golden guns are ranged like instant kill. And Sunbreaker kind of is too. And it's pretty good in a situation where you're in this like team shot meta. Like you're going to get team shot. If you go out in the open, if you can just stand in a sunspot behind a wall and throw like peek out and throw hammers at lanes. (laughs) Yeah. Like that's going to be great. You're going to get 10 of them. So striker's great. And I foresee pulse grenades just not lasting very long in this current strength. So I don't know. Might be a, a future best bet. Yeah. I mean, that's the takeaway is if you can, experience the most of the game get comfortable with everything with a huge variety of builds when a change does happen and a patch shifts the meta even slightly you're better prepared to adjust to that and you can quickly jump on the next good thing so it's just you know it's covering your bases so to speak yeah i'm so happy sunbreaker's back (laughs) Uh. i'm happy swain the sunbreaker is back you're the only you're the only Sunbreaker I really care about. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> so go out and play it, people. I don't want to be the only one. All right. Well, we're getting ready for this next segment. And this one has been a long time in the making. Um, more stuff you should not be sleeping on. Uh, but before we get to that, of course, we need to give a shout out to our sponsor this week. It's Redbox. Look, everyone knows Redbox is all about renting movies and video games for cheap, but did you know that Redbox also sells used games starting as low as $4.99? So for the price of one of those extra large caramel frap, double espresso, no foam, two pump drinkity drinks that you love, (laughs) you could start the most legendary game night tradition ever, playing your hearts out all the way up to bedtime. Hey, look, if you got kids... Kids don't know about old video games. They play games on iPad. Get them a classic game and get a a game for $5, less than that, $4.99, for way less than you'd play in a store. You can keep your kids quietly entertained all month long. So you can practice your new Sunbreaker chops. Turn up the heat a little bit and throw way more grenades than you should be allowed to do. So that's right. Buying games from Redbox is a way cheaper option, and this time you keep them forever. Right now, they've got Doom, Dark Souls 3, and Madden NFL 17 all on sale. So head over to the box and do game night on the cheap. It's Redbox, the smarter way to watch and play. But Dad, Dad, I want to play game on iPad. (laughs) Um... Can I tell you about a game? It's called Every Mario Ever. (laughs) What? No! No, no, trust me, kiddo. Trust me, kiddo. Once you once you get some of these stars, you're gonna be you're gonna be jonesing for the other hundred and nineteen of them. Trust me on this one. Bones, are, are you still a kid, or do you want to introduce this next segment? <laughs> do you want to introduce this next segment? As, My dad made me play um, games on PS4 now, so let's talk about the <laughs> Destiny Two weapons. <laughs> daddy, daddy. My dad. So My dad's a gaming elitist. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> oh, that's a throwback. <laughs> Classic. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Without further ado, let's go through the list here. We have all the arch- archetypes of weapons, the types, uh, and and you know everyone knows their favorites. Everyone knows Mida Uriels. But what if you want to mix it up? What if you want to be the guy that beats the guy with Mida and Uriels, but you did it in a fun way? Um, let's just jump right in. We all have a couple suggestions uh, for almost each of these weapon categories. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's first hand cannons. Hand cannons. There. Can I just say? Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Can I just say? I thought I was doomed to RNG, no no land, <laughs> and I was never going to get anything. I'd completely given up, and I was turning in some engram at Rahul, and uh, I was just ready to get another minimum distance. He gave me an old fashioned. It's a pretty good hand cannon. That's the one everyone likes, but I've had plenty of practice with all of the other hand cannons 
uh, since then. So yeah, let's can talk I, about can it. I, uh, you know what, Burns? No, you may not just say all that things you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out if you just power through, uh, you can get away with quite a bit. So, that no, that's terrible advice. Do not take that advice, kids. This isn't a hot take, but I think hand cannons are in a pretty good spot right now. Is that a hot take? Did I accidentally do a hot take? Anyway, that's a hot take. Um, I think it depends on what you're going against, but uh, I've been having a ton of fun with hand cannons in the past few days. Well, actually, the past like week or so. But mostly because I'm getting into engagements with auto rifles and with like SMGs that people are pushing at their like range limit. And I'm getting into these engagements and a lot of people like are using like Uriels or Mida and I'm getting hit with high caliber rounds from however many directions. And the great thing about a hand cannon is you don't need to be that accurate. You just got hit body shots and by the time it takes me to get a bunch of body shots in i'm killing faster than them and it's hitting much harder so if someone one of my teammates is like hitting them as well like hand cannons are great like they're really good cleanup kills and they're really good to just mess with people well, and cleanup kills is where they where they shine, right? It's not about yeah. getting into an, a one on one engagement where you're both at full health and then out dueling them. Right now, it's about using that burst of energy to get that final touch after you weakened them up, or or just came around the corner and saw some some guy at low health. Uh, and that's really what impacts my decision on the hand cannon. I've been all about better devils for the better part of the uh, Destiny 2's lifespan, but. I finally got the Minuet 12, which was popular in the beta. And I like that one the most for that exact reason. It's got that increased accuracy on the first shot. It's all about using my scout rifle or auto rifle or whatever, and then switching to that and going, blam, getting that one shot. You can do it in the air. You're not worried about extreme, extreme precise hits. You can uh, aggressively push over Titan barriers. I love the Minuet 12 for that. And that's the, what, what uh, rate of fire? It's the 140. Yeah, it's the 140s. Yeah. So I I really like the Dire Promise, which is the Dead Orbit one, which is a 150. Um, it's a, l- a little bit faster, um, but it's really nice. Like you get like you can really push the amount of like shots you can put on someone uh, and not really hit a lot of like issues with Bloom or like f- just not like missing. <laughs> it's got good recoil to it, but I like there's like two ends that I like, and it's the one fifties, which is dire promise. And I also like the uh steady hand, which is the iron banner one. And that goes the opposite direction. And it's a heavy hitter at one ten. And that one has some good synergy as well. I I don't know how, um, how much of a sleeper this one is. People like it pretty good, but my go-to, um, and I, I, I didn't like it at first, but it just felt better than everything else I was using was Judgment. And I like it for the exact same reason that you do Bones. I, I believe it's actually that same adaptive archetype. It has the opening shot, um, but it also has that final perk of moving target where you get a boon, uh, where you get a boost to aim assist while you're aiming down sights and you get a little bit of increased movement speed um, for specifically that use case of, you know, get those last two shots off on somebody. Um just great utility. I just found it sticky in a way that a lot of other hand cannons weren't. I need all the stickiness I can get. Yeah, that's the same. Uh, Again, phrasing. It's the same rate of fire as the, uh, <laughs> as the, uh, the minuet. Mm-hmm. That adaptive. All right, so we're thinking about hand cannons a little bit differently. We've got some favorites there. I do have to say that old-fashioned is real nice, but everybody knows that. Let's move on. Uh, let's talk about auto rifles. I got some auto rifles. Bones, you got an auto rifle? Yeah, I wanna I wanted to shout out uh the Iron Banner auto rifle called the Forward Path. Uh it's basically like the scathe lock with just a tiny little bit of improvement when it comes to uh stability and range, which is two two really comfortable things. On uh, on an auto rifle, and it also comes with tap the trigger, which is what ma- what makes the uh, the trials auto rifle so popular. It's that initial boost of accuracy and stability. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can you can see it on really good auto rifles as it is, and this one is the uh, the 600 RPM archetype, so it's slightly different. 
uh, but it it fits really well. And in your kinetic slot, it's great to pair with with a lot of other options that I like uh, on a on a mid range kind of map. Um, I, I, if I want range, I'll probably put a uh, a pulse or a scout on. But I just think it's good, and it's nice to get something that's uh, feels just like my scathe lock, which I really enjoy. It just slightly different. I don't like. I've been playing with tap the trigger a little bit more, and kind of tapping the trigger with my auto rifles, and uh, it's it's a neat perk to kind of try and uh, push and abuse. I have two that I want to talk about. Um, I do have to give a shout out to the uh, the Jiangshi, and I, I know Dan's been talking about this one since the moment it dropped. I I do like all of those autos in that Uriel's archetype. I mean, this is. Your origin story. This is the number uh, from Future War Cult. Uh, Jiangshi's a fun one where Urals is kind of focused specifically on that longer range. Um, and of course, it does have the high caliber rounds, hard to beat. Uh, Jiangshi's got a little bit less range, but it's got sort of a different role to play. Um, in exchange for that little bit of range, it's got significantly higher stability, reload speed, and handling. And in addition, to that, it's got the hip fire perk on it. Um, this is not for every subclass. If I'm playing a little bit farther back or, um, you know, this is my, my longer range of my two primaries, um, probably not the one that I go to, but if I'm feeling aggressive or, um, I'm, I'm really focusing on my, my kinetic weapon is sort of my main one. And this is sort of my, my panic, whip it out and kill somebody at a variety of ranges. Um, I love the Jiangshi, but I do have, uh, what I think is quite a bit more of a sleeper here. Um, this is, and I think our first one of the list, this is a rare. This is the Sand Wasp 3AU. This is the same archetype as the uh, Perseverance, as the Valicaden. These are all the, um, what do they call it? The rapid fire uh, Valicaden style auto rifles. Um, but something about this blue, it's got more aim assist than either Perseverance or Valicaden. It's got... Um, Pretty comparable stability, but it's got high caliber rounds on it. It's got that same dynamic sway reduction, but you're getting more aim assist. You're getting high caliber rounds. This is one blue that you should not dismantle if you get it. Um, I I really like this particular archetype. I've tried all the different ones, and it feels weird to roll with a blue gun that I just keep locked so I don't dismantle it. Uh, this is my favorite out of all of them by far. That is a gun I do not have. Uh, you've probably dismantled a million of <laughs> probably. them. Probably dismantle the next one. Fair. Yeah, you find that like a lot of people are dismantling these blues. Another really good blue is the cuboid ARU. That's another auto rifle. Yeah, Bonesy, I I, I picked up a cuboid because you had mentioned using it, mm-hmm. and I gotta say it's pretty nice. But tell me why you like this one. Why save it? Oh, birds. Fine. Ask Bones. Don't ask me. I don't care. <laughs> I brought it up. Well, I, it's my auto rifle. I'll Screw say you. I'll say my reasoning and you say yours. I, I just think that this uh, moving target perk is the trend that I like. Uh, and I will talk about it again with my list. Uh, that's increased movement speed and target acquisition when moving while aiming down sights. And boy, does that work perfectly, uh, especially when I run a low mobility build on my Warlock or something like that. I, I would much rather... Uh, have a little bit of speed boost while I'm aiming and still be able to strafe while maintaining really high armor and resilience. So it just pairs nicely. It's just a good perk. Well, that was my answer too. Uh, <laughs> guess we agree with, like It looks cool. Fuck. I was going to say that the Jiangshi is the coolest looking auto rifle in the game and the reason I use it over Uriel's quite often. <laughs> it is nice. On to the next one. What's next? Up next, we've got a Pulse Rifles. Mine just says not right now. <laughs> yeah, I, you have a lot of guns called not right now that I don't know about. I am not. Expo- well, if I said not right now, it's because I, I'm either using something that everyone's using or I just I'm not using it. Pulses, I'm not using not it right now. Just not using it right now. So I'll sit this one out and tinker on my phone while you guys talk about it. pulse rifles. I just recently got into pulse rifles and uh I do have to say that my favorite is the Vigilance Wing. It definitely got a nice usage buff when uh, when uh, Zer sold it. So I know people have been playing with it. I think it feels great. It pairs with my favorite weapon, uh, which I haven't named yet, but my favorite weapon is 
is why I also pulled Nightshade out of my vault. You know, it's just, you know, after talking to Ramblin about it, there's definitely a utility for them to stretch a little bit farther than the auto rifles and, uh, and, and perks like, Rampage are so good or, or the kill clip or whatever. Uh, those extra damage perks are, are really nice in, in quick play and stuff like that. Like when you're shooting down a hallway and you know, there's two people fire away if you get one of those perks active. So it's a good one, but vigilance wing is, is one of my favorite guns in the game. I never quite understood with vigilance wing in PVP. I mean, where are you placing that first shot to compensate for the the five round burst? I mean, are you aiming a little bit lower so the last one ends in a headshot, or are you just <laughs> honestly? I aim going. For, I aim for the belt uh, with this gun. I I do aim really low, more so than I would with the standard pulse. Uh, it's it's body shot time to kill is exceptional. It is like I believe faster than Mida at Mida's best. It is so, so comfortable. And it's got that kick because, hey, five bullets, it goes one, two, three, four, five. Like it does rise quite a bit. It's nice and vertical though. So if you get those crits on like the last two bullets of each burst, you are really sitting in a good spot. So it's, it's, it's just nice. (laughs) You don't have to aim too carefully, which makes it great. Well, I had talked about my favorite pulse rifle uh, a couple episodes ago. Um, And this one, I did not go to the Destiny DB and start comparing different stats or anything. I was a little bit frustrated with pulse rifles. None of them felt quite right to me. So I dug literally everyone out of my vault. It took me like a batch and a half. um, And I just shot walls in the EDZ until I found one that clicked with me. Um, I mean, of course, I've, I've got a great Nightshade. Nightshade is great, very reliable, very solid in PvP. Um, but at the end of the day, the one that just felt best when it comes down to the intangibles is a 360 RPM one called Swift Ride. I don't know, man. I could make an argument. I mean, I could, looking at the stats, I could say compared to Nightshade, it's got a way more vertical natural recoil direction, so you don't have to run counterbalance mods. That's nice. That is nice. Um, it's got more range and stability than uh, than a lot of others in its class, including Nightshade. That's nice. Um, it's got decent scopes. It's got Head Seeker, which is um, which is fairly usable in this archetype. But the truth is, it just feels good. I don't know. It just felt better than the others. I, I feel a little bit more confident using it. I go figure. Swift ride. Go figure. Well, I think we've all probably got something for this next category uh, up. And this is actually the one I've been looking forward to talking about most. Um, we got scout rifles. I mm. really want to like scout rifles more since they were just my favorite in D1. I'm kind of okay without them. I mean, there, there's a couple fun ones that I like, but honestly, I might kind of sit back on these. Uh the one I wanted to bring up more so that I want to practice with it more is Frontier Justice. Cause Zen moment on a high impact scout is really nice because those things have a pretty noticeable kick. So I wonder if I can get something out of that. Otherwise, what do you guys think? I've been having trouble like with scout rifle recoil, like you're saying, like Yeah. I don't pull like I either overcompensate and I end up hitting too many body shots or I'm just getting flinched too hard and it's just like the range is just don't play into my play style all that well. So I like being a little bit closer to everyone and being in a better range and it's, you know, it's more fun that way. So uh, I do have a scout I like that's, you know, a little off brand, but uh, a lot of times I end up using Mita if I have to. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, if I have to. But I do, I do like using the the raid scout, the conspirator. Um, simply like I like the I like the full auto of it. It makes it feel like a really slow auto rifle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I I'm sort of of the same feeling, um, guys. I found my gun. Like it, it's it's an interesting one, um, and I I, I kind of liked it in the beta. I got it early in the beta, um, and then. That first weekend playing Trials, uh, Keen was rocking it, and I thought, man, that's kind of a weird choice. That's sort of off meta. And I dug into the numbers on it, and I realized, actually, that is not off meta. It's just a high-skill weapon. Um, I'm using the rare version of the Black Scorpion. This is called the Black Tiger. 
Um, this is the Vice full auto style scout rifle. And this gun is very interesting to me. The thing about this one is that if you hit all headshots with it, it's got one of the fastest time to kills in its class. Really hmm. impressive. If you hit all body shots with it, it has one of the worst out of all the scout rifles. <laughs> hmm. um, this is a decision to make, but if you're feeling confident with your aim, um, you can do work with it. Um, I happen to like the Black Tiger. I mean, they're both great, um, but Black Tiger has Zen moment on it. And because you're treating this full auto as sort of a slower, um, a, a slower auto rifle, um, I often just focus on getting that first hit, sort of getting the contact, letting Zen moment kick in, and then dialing in the headshots. Um, if I've got a teammate firing with me, uh, this is very effective. Um, but more than that, it just feels good. I love the scope on it. The aim assist is great. Um, it reloads very quickly. It just feels really good to me. Um, and when I put on knucklehead radar on my hunter, it all came together. Something just clicked with this. Um, I can't, I can't quite, um, I can't quite explain why pairing this with, uh, an SMG feels so good to me. Um, but this is the version of destiny two that I want to play right now. And, uh, aside from King Koala, who I proudly stole this from, <laughs> no one else is using it. So <laughs> I'll be a little off meta champ for a bit, or maybe on meta champ and y'all just catching up. I love this gun. Black tiger. I put monochromatic on it. It looks great. We could have a whole episode about what shaders to use on this. Oh episode. my god, the shader episode. Oh god, this is <laughs> that might be one for the bonus <laughs> podcast. We're gonna need to stretch the fuck out and not talk about PvP at all. Just looking good. Well, I don't I don't quite want to talk about my gun yet, but I, I let's let's go to SMGs. Now mm. I I will give Swain most of the credit, but I will also say Crucible Radio was hyping that Antiope, that Antiope, the Antiope, whatever you want to call it. We were all on that pretty much right away. We were first. And, uh, and, and a lot of people have been singing its praises. I like it. I found some other things I like instead. Are there any other SMGs you guys want to recommend? Swain, I, I don't believe you have any. Uh, I have one. It's called uh, Not Right Now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I haven't gotten an type B to drop yet. I'm using the adjudicator. I like it great, but, um, it's just not as rangy. And I, I love phosphorus, uh, with, with the, the slower perk on it, but I've not pulled that one out in a minute. Quick one. Yeah. <laughs> phosphorus has some, has some utility, especially when you like that feel, but you want to use a different kinetic. It's just, uh, I, I have the trouble. I think I talked about this where it's like, I want to always have the range. So I put on Antiope and then I'm like, Oh, I should just put on Manannan every time I use this other gun because I need that range. So at least I don't get myself in that situation. So I'll still throw the phosphorus on. I do think the iron banner SMG, the hero's burden needs a little bit of more play time, but it, it deserves some credit. It's got really strong base stats. It's got a fast reload speed, good range, uh, near perfect recoil direction for an SMG. It's at 93 out of 100. I mean, that's higher than any other SMG I can find in my inventory, at least. Uh, so that's pretty good. Threat detector is the perk, and it has increased reload stability and handling when enemies are in close proximity. And you think, oh, that sounds more like a PvE thing, but I can't even count the amount of times I get kind of stuck around a corner or I know someone's on the flag on the other side of this wall and I'm always mm -hmm. trying to like sneak my way in there. I mean, that seems like it would come up far more often than anyone gives it credit for. So I think it deserves some, some play time. I mean, and that, that's what SMGs are for, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. That is, that is the gun to have this perk on. All right, well, we could get to power weapons, and maybe we will, but there is one in particular that we seem to be dancing around. Uh, Bones, <laughs> should we do power weapons? You want to save this No, one? no, let's just talk about it now. We'll do power All weapons. All right, of course, we've not discussed sidearms yet, and I'm just using the last hope or whatever, uh, but Bonesy's on some new shit. Tell me about this. Okay, I like sidearms. They're fun. Last hope is objectively phenomenal. You can't go wrong to put it on. No one's going to tell you otherwise. Crucible Radio will not be the person to tell you, don't use Last Hope. 
but I will definitely be maybe the only person to tell you to use the fool's remedy from Iron Banner. I like the Iron Banner guns. I've, I've shouted out many of them, but this one is a full auto Suros, Suros sidearm. Not a burst, but a full auto, just full on clink, 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 clink. Makes that fun. It noise. does. It's got a really good sound. And what have I always complained about with sidearms on this show since they first came out is that the rate of fire sucks to do with my trigger finger. I hate it. I really like, I was like hoping when we saw the full auto one and like the reveals that there would be a good one. Like, cause it felt like it was going to be like one of those things like, yeah, you're never going to find a good one of these, <laughs> but this one's great. And yeah. I, listened, I listened to you that one night. I sent you a message. I was like, oh my God, this, this sidearm is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I converted you. It's uh, it, it's it's not too shabby. So, all right, why is this one good? Well, it hits for like 27 to the head. It's great. If you can get up close, if I'm talking about hitting those corners, you know he's trying to peek in a room. There's someone on the other side of it. And you just step out and you engage. If they have something like a Uriel's on the other side of that wall, You can beat them flat out. It just flat out will beat them. And it's not even a concern about there's no high caliber rounds because at that point, you're not trying to like throw their shots off. You're too close. All bullets are going to hit. So you get right up close and you just mow them down and aim for crits. And you do that by using moving target, the perk I already mentioned, that gives you enhanced target acquisition. So you can come around a corner while aiming down sights, get a nice little movement speed and just hit. And reload pretty quick. Do it again. There's there's a way for me to take my game into a close quarters game whenever I put this gun on. And and the thing about the full auto sidearm, while Last Hope is still good at this, the amount of times I can use it in the air to finish someone off, to pull off some dumb move, to just sort of hit fire and combine with a melee. Like I'm always comfortable shooting this gun. I don't. I never feel like I need to carefully aim a pulse of my of my vigilance wing or I or I need to like line up headshots to make sure I win with the time to kill on an auto rifle. I'm always just shooting it as often as I can. If I'm hitting some people, great. And it just gives me more opportunities to keep constant pressure on and take my game to a vertical level that is kind of hard to do with any other type of gun. I just think it feels awesome. It's my new favorite gun for sure. Guns note this pairs really well with vigilance wing. What? There's really well with Sunbreaker. <laughs> oh, yeah, because if you get a little sunspot there on the floor, you say, hey, come on in. A lot of times you're like you turn the corner, start getting sidearm shots off on and you clean it up with a, a melee. And it's like, oh, that's that's your because like in this game, it takes multiple melees. But if you get some shots off first and you get the follow up melee, that's almost a guaranteed sunspot. Oh yeah. It's well, and, and, and just always be ready to melee with whatever class on this gun. Uh, it, it puts constant pressure on it and you can hit fire shot literally up into the second you need to hit the melee. You watch their health. You see where it gets down. You go great. As soon as this last bullet goes melee and you will get that finisher. It's really great for just securing the melee kill and not getting stuck in those moments where you smack them and they have a little bit of health left and you're stuck putting your hands back on your gun or whatever takes your guardian so long and then they clean you up. It, it, <laughs> it, it mitigates that little issue of just not fully getting enough hit, uh, enough damage on them. I know I have a blind spot when it comes to guns in D2 because these archetypes are much more clearly defined now. There's similar styling or just straight up reskins in a lot of these. And I think... Oh, okay. That's just the same as the other one that I have. What's it? Dead man walking. Um, and I end up writing it off. What I'm continually surprised by is that even within this exact same archetype, this exact same looking gun, that there are huge differences here. This one's got a smaller mag than dead man walking, but it's got a phenomenally faster reload speed. It's got more aim assist. And you mentioned it before. It's got that moving target perk on it. Um, that you really kind of have to try out every named gun to see how this particular one performs. In a lot of ways, I think having multiple similar guns in the same archetype 
is kind of the div 2 version of random rolls. Like there's sort of one core gun here, but it gets reimagined all these different ways and you have to sort of play with all of them to know what works. Yeah, and you, then you find your identity in each single one. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why we use better devils versus old fashioned. I mean, there are two very, very different guns, even though statistically they can be kind of similar. All right. Well, that takes us out of our primaries. Um, let's do these power weapons fast. Cause there's just some silly ones right here. A lot of not right now. So I've never yeah. I didn't have it. I didn't have a whole long list of this. I don't know if there's one rocket that people don't know about. That's just killing that much better because one rocket kind of kills. That's the thing about the power weapon. Uh, system now is that they do succeed most of the time at doing what they're supposed to do because you're not challenging an equal power weapon. Uh, but I do, uh, I do feel like I just got to say, I don't always play void Walker, but who is it really fun to put a sword on and use blink? It is so cool. Yeah. Swords oh, yeah. seem, yeah. Swords are the, uh, a solid choice for those things because especially with like quick thing, I, I got to, Birds, this is a, another episode, but I played a lot of Hunter this week in Iron Banner, and you just, I almost spent an entire match with Quick Fang. <laughs> As you get, I would get it, and then go get some kills, and by the time I would like had like one swing left, I was like, oh, power ammo again. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky and yeah, it sword is, ninja. It is uniquely fun, especially when you're a night st- stalker, to puppy guard the power ammo with your invis. Like they know you're there and they know what's going to happen if they go for the power ammo. And you can kind of just wait them out slash bait them out. Um, I agree. It is enjoy- enjoyable. Swords are swords. Well, swords aren't swords, and I think the question is, if you want to use a sword on something other than a hunter, what's the choice? Bonesy, what are, what are you using? Well, if you're not Naruto running at people like a little maniac <laughs> with your quick fang, uh, Blink pairs so well with the Steel Sybil Z14. I believe it's the Crucible model. It is. Get it from Shax, and it's got a perk called Assassin's Blade, which, which kills boost movement speed and damage. You get real fast. It's kind of like Quick Fang after that, I, I guess, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, to be able to blink up to approach, lose your target, swing backwards, hit them, and then move on. It's always that that first swing, right? And you see them there, but they've already turned around. And you're like, oh, no. They turned around, and you think you're about to get mowed <laughs> down. Well, this kind of really prevents that. And get that second blink off, too, if you're in a bind. But the, the speed boost is noticeable. It really does feel good to just kind of swing someone and just sprint towards the guy who's not looking at you. So I think still steel Sybil is absolutely the best sword when you're not on your hunter with quick fang. No argument there. Um, I'm going to throw out another option just in case people don't know about it. This is of course, complex solution. And the uh, special trait on this one is that a powered sword kill. So a sword kill, you're not bashing them with a ghost sword. Um, a kill gives you ammo. And when you're still figuring out swords, you kind of don't know what that range is, or maybe you're used to quick fang range and you're taking some unnecessary swings. Um, This one is a little bit more forgiving of button mashers, which I may be from time to time. Um, And it's another one. I love how cool all these swords look. Um, (laughs) But uh, this one is worth calling out. Uh, What about shotguns? Hmm. I have a recommendation And I don't have any reason, just that, hey, it's good. Uh, Pump Train got me on this one. It's from the Vanguard. It's called Deadpan Delivery. Feels good. It's a solid, well-rounded shotgun that doesn't do anything weird or wacky. And it's like, great. Oh, this one is getting me kills for sure. I just kind of wanted to out fall out fall out on this. Um, One of my... I don't, I'm probably not the best, but one of my most trusted shotguns is not a green shotgun, but a white shotgun called Stubborn Oak. It's one of the first ones you get in the game. Uh, when I first started playing on my Titan, I said, all right, I'm PvP only on this Titan. No story mission. I spent a lot of time in the Crucible with white weapons, and I kept getting new green and new blue shotguns and found myself keep coming back to this one white shotgun. Um, I don't know what sort of bizarro world fallout place hipster cred i get for um using white <laughs> weapons uh probably not a go-to but uh i i just like it like like you say i just like this one i do on the flip side have a numbers argument to make for uh, our next category which is sniper rifles um 
And snipers are interesting because unlike a lot of the other weapon types, there aren't, there isn't one absolute standout that sort of has name recognition. I think the long walk, which is the trial sniper is, is pretty widely regarded. Um, a lot of people, uh, shout out to Dan, are swearing by the uh, Aachen LR2. This is a rare sniper rifle, um, but it's just got snapshot and a great handling speed on it. It is crazy D1 level snapshot fast. Um, I would like to make a case for the Weist sniper rifle. I love Weist guns so much called Widow's Bite. Um, this one is a little bit faster firing. It's got a larger magazine than the others. Um, but I'd like to make the case for this one. Um, it has crazy aim assist compared to everything else. Even the Aachen, which is above the others at 56, um, just can't touch the 69 aim assist that's on this one. Oh, um, hell yeah, the sex number. <laughs> <laughs> the sex number. <laughs> um, Without even having any perks to support it, it's got incredible base handling as well. Also, 69, <laughs> the sex number. Um, it's it's not the same flavor as the others. Um, the archetype makes it a little bit more of a team shooting sniper, unless you're feeling real confident about that headshot. Um, but I think this is one that is probably not getting the attention that it deserves. And I'll say real quick, use the Valetta D. It's an amazing sniper rifle. Got a collat with it the other day by accident. Cool. <laughs> there you go. It's got that quick draw, man. Can't go it's wrong. Fast. Yep. I'm uh, I'm curious to see if we uh if we have any uh snipers really rise up in uh, on PC. If if just the mouse and keyboard means that the precision weapon at range is the go-to with sharpshooters. Uh it, it might change completely, it might not. But either way, I'm curious and it's coming up soon. <laughs> Real, real soon. Oh, we haven't talked about that yet. Um, well, uh, we, we, we got another week to talk about it, right? Um, yeah. That takes us to our final one. And uh, Swain with a return to form as the Sunbreaker to kick off this episode. I can't think of a better way to finish this episode than to have Swain talk about your good old fusion rifles. Swain, what are you using? All of them. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, they're all great. Like, they're all almost all entirely great options, depending on the map. Some are better close up. Some are better at longer range. I've been using the Iron Banner one, the Wizened Rebuke. Um, it's like a Plan C light, but you're not even like, you don't even have to really use it like the Plan C where you're swapping. The best thing with that, though, is if you don't have your heavy out when you pull, well, if you don't have your power ammo out when you pull power ammo, and someone's about to come up on you real quick, you pull the power ammo, switch to it re really quick, and get the kill. Uh, it's a four bolt, and it's amazing. It's got incredible range, and you just got to get used to the pattern. So fusion rifles are great. Just use any of them. They're fun. Yeah. No argument there. All right, well, I, I think uh, we can probably wrap this one up by saying, dear listener... Tell us what you're using. I mean, yeah. this is our personal favorites from our drops and the tiny fraction of the guns in this game we've gotten a chance to play with. Uh, leave a comment. Go to Crucible Playbook and leave a comment. Go to YouTube. Leave a comment. Tell us what Sleeper Blue we're all missing out on. And uh, maybe we'll pull some of our favorites to talk about in the coming weeks. Yeah, I'm always looking for things to use. So if you're using something really weird, like something you got on IO, you can only get every 10 hours or so. Like, let me know. I want to know. I'm imagining there's music playing underneath us <gasps> right now because we've just so smoothly transitioned to the outro. Guys, thank you for another good week. This is fun. I can't wait to be home. <laughs> fuck. Video games, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, uh, I got work early tomorrow and I'm still considering playing after we get done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, CrucibleRadio.com. Follow us on Twitter, Swain slash underscore CR, Bones underscore CR, and Famous ah, Birds. Famous Birds! Yep, <laughs> he's beating the, the little uh, setup we had there. Famous <laughs> Birds underscore CR. Someone make that Twitter <laughs> handle. Anyway, oh <boy. laughs> 
Guys, thank you for the <laughs> for the great comments on Twitter and Reddit and YouTube. Uh, I, I engage a lot on, on Reddit. There's always good discussions, um, but there are great comments on YouTube as well. Uh, thank you to everyone who listens. It really, uh, it's, it's nice. I get push notifications on my phone for some reason. I want to turn them off because there's a lot. But either way, I get a notification. I'm like, ah, cool. Someone watched. And that makes me happy. I can safely say the uh, the main and perhaps only current usage for Twitter for me is responding to people who pick up on one tiny thing I say on the episode and respond to it with more detail, more insight, a good question or something. Um yeah, all, all you at Famous Birds are, have great attention to detail. I love hearing about <laughs> it. Please keep it coming. Alrighty, everyone. We love you. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> no, no, no. Birds is a kid. Coming at you this week from 10 O'Clock Reservation. Check them out. That's 10 O'Clock Reservation.bandcamp.com. And of course, if you're a musician, you too can be played right here on Crucible Radio. It all starts when you send us an email, some of your tracks to crucibleradio at gmail.com. What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-host Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com crucibleradio and join the squad. See you there.